Hey guys, I'm Dice and I'm here bringing you some magic, and today we're going to be playing some Fire Wave. I haven't played this deck in a couple of days, and yeah, I mean, I'm finished with all of the, or basically I did one deck a day, either the deck guide or whatever I thought of the deck at that point, and also some gameplay, at least two games, sometimes three, uh, and... I don't know, I mean, that, that's that been pretty fun, but now I'm done with that, so I need to figure out what I want to do. Um, I might start Enderanked again. I remember I hated that series when I was recording it last year, but uh, I do remember that there was some enjoyment from it. I can't remember even exactly what the rules were, but you can go back and check. I'll, I'll probably do that right after this video, right after I record it. But anyway, I might, I might end up doing that. Um, I might just start playing random decks for a while or start trying to do unorthodox uh, builds of each deck so maybe not the best build but something interesting that'll work uh, one thing that I do have to say is that a lot of my deck guy, uh, or original deck thingies weren't perfect and uh, in fact maybe I'll go back and rename some of them if I'm not going to keep them as the official deck guides but I, I just think that they could be improved a little bit, especially Mass of Demir, because after I posted that video, a ton of people kept saying, oh, Dice Show, it's not as bad as you say it is, and then they gave me some builds, and I was trying them out with my own changes, but I, I actually think that the deck is, is a lot better than I gave it credit for. So, my original opening grip, just my starting hand, I don't know, original opening grip or starting hand? Huh. Anyway, this is okay. It's got some interesting things in that I have ooh, a lot of phoenixes. Uh, I have Chandra's Spitfire and Grim Lava Mancer, and they combo really, really well together. But you need to get some cards in the graveyard, and I don't have any instants or sorceries, so uh, that is not going to be very good for a while. But now that I have this Firewing Phoenix, I can definitely get some pressure on pretty early. I really don't know if I'm going to want to play this Magna Phoenix out. It, I guess it depends on if he's playing Hunter Strength or uh, Chant of Moldiah. So he's playing Hunter Strength. So that means that I probably don't want to play this thing out unless he plays some creatures out himself. All right, so he's just going to drop a Garrick's Companion. And uh, I could play Chandra Spitfire here, but since I don't have any instants or sorceries or anything, I'm just going to drop this Chandra's Phoenix and start beating in. Hopefully get some damage in. See... The thing that you really have to play around against Hunter Strength is taking some early damage, letting them get two or three creatures on the board, and then uh, them casting an overrun and just stealing the game out of nowhere. And I'm worried that's what's going to happen to me this game since I don't have any removal. And, I mean, it would be great if I could draw some removal, especially, like, two removal spells, um, and then I can just get rid of both of these... Gar or one... <sighs> Two removal spells and I can get rid of both of these Garrick's Companions and something else because um, Grim Lava Mancer can, uh, can help with that kind of thing. But, yeah, see, what I really want to do is just toss Firewing Phoenix out there and start attacking with it, but I don't know if I can do that. All right, so there is a Disintegrate. Um, so, yeah, what I think I want to do here is play... What I want to do is to be able to play a 3-drop and then have he just quit out. God, that's so frustrating. I don't know why he would quit out. He must have gotten disconnected or something. So I'm just going to attack with my Chandra's Phoenix. Could be a bad idea. Maybe I should have just left it back to block. And then I'm going to cast on Curve, so I'm just going to cast this Firewing Phoenix. And again, maybe that's a bad idea since I'm taking 6 damage next turn. Unless what I could do is I could just throw my Firing Phoenix in front of a Garrick's Companion. He's got an Oaken form. Well, that's not great. Alright, so here's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to um, throw that guy there, take the six, but I'll be able to kill that thing next turn with a combination of... Um, disintegrate for three on this, and then I'll have two cards in my library, in my graveyard, and I can exile them and kill this thing. I had to get rid of the Firewing Phoenix for good, 
but uh, I can't let that thing with Oaken Forms stick around. And, I mean, I'm not in great shape now because I don't have very many powerful cards left, and um, I have no no uh, fodder for my Grim Lava Mancer to use, no cards in my hand to help it, but I don't know if he's got nothing then. I guess I might be okay. I don't think that deck has any flash creatures. So there's no point in not bringing Grim Lava Mancer. And this might have actually just been a bad play. Because if he does like play a creature and, and has a prey upon, then he can get rid of all my creatures. Yeah, I don't think I should have played the Magma Phoenix. But that's where we're at. Probably should have just played the Spitfire. And now I'm just... Alright, so now he's down to four. So if he does manage to kill my Magma Phoenix, then I'll be able to get it back and hopefully kill him with it. I guess there really was no point in me playing the Chandra Spitfire. So I guess my opponent just conceded because he had nothing going on in hand. I don't know what cards he had. Maybe like Biorhythm. But he's got five cards in hand and none of them can do anything on six mana? That's crazy. I don't... I don't even know. Like, they must have all been like Overrun, Overwhelming Stampede, Rancor, stuff like that. That's one of the one of the troubles that I had with that Hunter Strength deck, is that it didn't have enough creatures for it to be worth it. Maybe after the promo cards come in, if like six or seven of them are creatures that cost five or less, or if there is like a bunch of ramp added, then if either of those two things happen, then there's a good chance that that deck can become a lot better than it is. And I think that uh, it'll actually be a pretty good deck, whereas now it's one of the lower powered decks. I guess we can just rock a random deck. Nah, let's let's play Slivers. I haven't played Slivers in a while either. But this is like the first time that I'm doing two different decks in one video in Magic 2014. Oh my God, this is insane. Who? I don't I don't know. I don't know if I can handle this. This is this is really some crazy stuff going on right here. I think it's funny when people um, make such a big deal out of it being the first or the last thing, but it's it's not anything relevant. So, like uh, somebody said, somebody would say for the third Call of Duty Black Ops map pack that's coming out. Oh my god, this is my first gun game on this exact map. Isn't this so exciting? Or just, I don't know, something like that. But whenever there's a new thing that is just so irrelevant and um, out there that it doesn't really matter. All right, I'm not going to keep this hand at all. Just not even remote keepage. This one is interesting. I've got all my colors, and I've got some good powerful slivers. And I've got the uh, the wonderful combo of Blur Sliver right into Bone Scythe Sliver. That's my favorite, if I can just draw another land. I also have the super powerful Mirror, mirror Entity, which is obviously insane with Bone Scythe Sliver. Because if you make your guys even like 4-4s, four I'm going to go get a Forest. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. It's so important to get Forest with your first Terramorphic Expanse, because you have Rampant Growth, and you have... Uh, what's the other one called? You have Rampant Growths, and you have Predatory Slivers, which you can play on too. So my opponent is playing Hunter's Strength again. I haven't seen anyone play Hunter's Strength in like two days. Actually, alright. I played one game against Hunter's Strength, but I barely ever see anyone rock this deck. Alright, he's just going to play a Tusker. I hope he drew that, because if he played Nature's Lore before Tusker, then I'm going to be a sad, sad man. Although, if he didn't draw land this turn, and he wanted to try and... Um, ramp to his like alright there is a rancor so this really sucks because I could have gotten rid of that rancor uh, with the path but you know doesn't always work out the way you want it to so drew a fiery justice that's not bad but I would like to uh, would like to get another land so that I can drop this bone scythe sliver oh, god it's so hard to say Elephant Guide. Well, that thing is just getting pathed. Um, that's what sucks about about path for them, at least. Is uh, hopefully I'll draw a Predatory Sliver or a Plains. Either of those two would be pretty welcome. 
That's what sucks about auras, is they just get destroyed by Path to Exile. And since he's only got one creature, he should be in bad shape. Alright, so we drew a mountain, which means that we can only do one thing. <laughs> this turn. I guess I could have drawn any three drop sliver. But, um, may as well try and bait some more stuff out of him. I mean, like, if he plays land enlarge or land overwhelming stampede to try and kill me or something like that, then... I can get some more value out of this thing, which I think might be a little bit much, but it won't look like he's got anything. Alright, well, get out of my face now. And yeah, the elephant guy doesn't even work because it, it only happens when the creature dies. Um, but he does get his, his ranker back to hand. If he doesn't have any creatures, he's got a creature. <laughs> I was about to say, if he doesn't have any creatures, then it doesn't matter. All right, all right. I hear ya. So, there's a predatory sliver. Yeah, we're just gonna play bone slice sliver. Cause then if we draw a land, then we can win the game next turn. Cause this is gonna hit him for eight down to ten. Even if I don't draw a land, I can win the game. But um, if I draw land, then I can play Hive Stirrings and Predatory Sliver, and then he's going to have to do something pretty impressive here if he doesn't want to lose. Like Prey Upon with my Bone Size Sliver. That would be enough. <laughs> and Enlarge, so he's just going to straight up kill me. Yeah. I knew I should have just killed that stupid thing. He only had one creature. I don't know. My, the, my line of play wasn't terrible. But it might have been a little bit more aggressive than I needed to be with so many cards in hand. Though he had a lot of cards in hand too. He just played all of them on that last turn. So that sucks. But I don't know. If he sticks with the same deck, I think that the Sliver deck will beat his a lot of the time. So um, this hand isn't that great because it doesn't have any good Slivers until Megantic. I've got some stirrings, but I have a face fetters, which should be really good against him if he's playing the same deck. And I've got a rampant growth, so I can get to my megantic a little bit faster. Um, and I can play that bone size sliver on turn three, which will be nice. And I can get all the colors since I have rampant growth and some forest. So I'm just going to go get a planes here. Oh, he's not playing the same deck at all. He's probably playing my deck or Enter the Dracomancer. But who plays that one? He's going to get like a, a mountain and then I'm still not going to know. Oh, he got a swamp. So he is playing Enter the Dracomancer. So this guy is definitely being a boss. Oh, wow. Thorncaster Sliver. This is definitely looking to be uh, my kind of game as long as I draw two more lands. One more, and I'll probably still win. Two more, and I don't see really how I can lose after dropping a Megantic. He's got to have, like, a Maelstrom Pulse, I guess. Uh, Jun Charm would do some work before I get Megantic out, obviously. All right, so just a Borderland Ranger. No big deal. Especially after I get my Thorncast to sliver out. Fiery Justice. I want to play on curve here. Getting high, playing Hive Stirrings might have been a better play here, because then if I can drop my Thorncaster Sliver next turn, then I can just ping away his Borderland Ranger. I would have definitely done that if he had played Dragon Master Outcast, but hopefully he attacks here, and then I can just first drag him down. Seems to be giving it more thought and consideration than should be uh, given when you are facing down an equal power first strike dude. <laughs> nope, didn't like it. Alright, so he's got four mana up here. We did draw another land. Unfortunately, it's a tapped land. But, not a big deal, since casting Hive Stirrings is also very good for me this turn. Alright, and he doesn't have anything. So, and he might have a Jun Charm. So, I am a little tempted to just not cast my my Thorncaster Sliver if he doesn't tap out. 
because that would be really bad for me if he's just got a gen charm kill like just straight up three for one me and then all I've got is this megantic sliver so hopefully I can draw land that comes into play untapped no but I do get a predatory sliver so I'll drop that I mean I know it goes under the same principle of getting wrecked by gen charm but um, now that I've got another sliver in hand to follow up after a gen charm I think I'm gonna be okay but it looks like he doesn't have anything and he's just gonna double chump here which means that I think I'll be able to win the game next turn um, if he doesn't play anything too impressive if not I can still face fetters it let's see can I kill him if I fiery justice this is gonna be four eight yeah I think I can so uh, four, eight, twelve. Oh man, I can't fiery justice and kill both of those things. But I can face fetters. Uh, the the dragon. Wait a second. I can do this. Okay, so let let's just let's just hold off. Take a look see what's going on so if we play this predatory sliver then he can then he has to take damage from these three things which is going to be 6 12 18 so if we play our cards right just do a lot of damage to this flame blast dragon just a ton of damage to this thing yeah you can gain some life and play a predatory sliver actually I don't even know if I needed to do that could have just played the predatory sliver no then he would have yeah he would have been able to block all but two and then still die so I didn't need to do that at all but um yeah whatever no big deal now die I guess there that was probably that seems like a uh a magic 2014 challenge where they just give you like six ways to win and you just have to cast like any one of your five cards and you still win that's how easy the challenges were but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video and stay tuned for some more content tomorrow maybe i'll maybe i'll do a sealed gameplay later and then maybe i'll open a new sealed pool tomorrow because this last one was pretty boring all it gave me was this stupid black white deck. I mean, I guess it, it, it allowed me to make that Mind of Oaks video, which was pretty interesting. But yeah, that's we're going to be done here. See you guys later. Bye.